morning, dark clouds rising, oh, there's no sunshine anywhere, strong winds blowing, God give us wisdom to grasp the message in the air. Welcome back to Lady Babylon. This is Wednesday Night Bible Study. And boy, do I have a whopper for you. I have a whopper for you. Tonight is going to be dedicated to the art, to the art of the ancient sorcerer Christians. Yes, yes. You're going to love it tonight on Lady Babylon. So tonight, when we're wrapping up the sermon, we will bring in the guns, and Neil will be joining us with some additional firepower. Fantastic. It's going to, you're going to love it tonight. This is good stuff. This is good stuff. But I'll start out. Neil will slide in. Tonight, I want to take you and before, before I tell you where we're going, I'm going to dedicate this to a person called Gunk Wretch. Gunk Wretch is a demon-possessed sorcerer. He gets his cues from the devil. Yeah, he does. He does. And he says to me, hey, have you seen this text? Have you seen this text? And I'm like, no. He says, you know, it's this good stuff from the Apocrypha. And what did I do? I ignore him. I ignored him a thousand pardons. Master wretch, a thousand pardons. So Gunk talks to the devil, and the devil tells him, give this over to Amun. So he tries again. He mentions it. Oh, and he says, you've got to find it. And I'm like, oh, God, I hate these things because most of them are Coptic. And I can't go back to the original, right? Bring it to me if it's in Greek. Oh, my God. Guess what? The Acts of Philip people. We owe Gunk Wretch a round of applause and a giant thank you tonight. Everybody out there in the chat, send, send GW the best and say thanks a lot for bringing us. Now, what did Gunk bring us? Gunk brought us a ton an absolute ton of drugs and cult. He even brought us, and this is this is what perked my ear up. Uh, this is, you mean, this is a fourth century text that's in great Greek, and it talks it talks about the dragon queen. Yes, yes, it does. It does, Jesus. And the sayings of Jesus that you didn't hear because the church said, we're going to have to get rid of that. Well, we've got the Greek. We don't care if it's part of the canon or not. We bust down the doors and take control of all of it. Right? We're going to do that. We're going to do that. Oh, God. Um, and I've got a follow-up coming, coming uh, for satanic initiation on Friday that uh, this is culmination love it it's good stuff okay i won't take up any of your time 
Let's get to it. That's enough. Turn it off, Chewy. We've gone back in the machine. We're there and we want to see what's going on. Let's purify this joint before we get out and start breathing the vapes. Shall we do that? Let's purify this place. Tonight, we call in Hipta. We call her in to cleanse this temple. Fantastic. Doesn't that feel good? That feels good. Here's what I'm going to do as the accompaniment, as the sebaceous. I'm going to tell you, just as a preview, on Friday, it will be the episode to end all screeds. I am going to put us all into the skin of an ancient lace days, and I'm going to show you what you've never seen. Oh, God. Let's bring it. Let's bring it. Should we hit it? Star charts. Let's go to our first point. What is this? Oh, bring it up. Bring it up. Lovely. Don't you love seeing the Greek? Oh, God. But so what are people saying? People? Philip. Philip. People. People. Philip. Philip. People. Who is Philip? Let's just look through the evidence. You say, this is the apostle of Jesus. And I say, yes, you are right. Now let's see what the text says, not what our traditions say, not what our best intentions say. Let's see what the text say. Let's meet Philip. Let's go. Okay. So what are people saying about him? Some people are saying he's a magus. Look at line two, people. The third word in magus. Do you see that? You cannot, you cannot not look at that anymore. It's in your brain. Philip's a magus. And what else is he? He's scolios. That guy is bent. That guy is twisted up here. You know what he does? I'm translating. You know what he does? He divides the sexes. What does he do that for? He teaches that chastity is the focus to God, to God will get there by chastity. And that people who participate in producing children, they fall short into a place of pain. Thank you, Philip. Thank you, Philip. Do me a favor. Can you turn a woman into a man? Philip, would you do that for me? Philip, in the name of Jesus Christ, would you turn a woman into a man? <sighs> no problem, says Philip. I'll show you. Let's go to the next one. Next one. Who is this Philip guy? Look at it. Third line in. I know. This is somebody talking to Phil. Look over here at Phil. I know that you are a pharmacos. And a, not just any pharmacos. Not just any drug using guy. You're one of the ones that works with Jesus. That's right. Did you know Jesus told Philip about this place? He told him. He told him, they'll catch up with you over there. Where is Philip? He goes to Greece. And as we're going to track him, he ends up in Asia Minor, modern-day Turkey. He ends up in a place... He ends up in a place where they worship a lady 
dragon, the great mother, the great mother. And how does Jesus know about these people? Mm, let's see. Let's see. Don't let's not make anything up. Right. Right. We got I've been honest with you the whole time, people. Right. We can't start making stuff up now. Let's go right back to the text. Here it is for anybody. Who's just, you, don't have any sources. you know, I'm the only guy on the Internet. Take it down to I'm going to brag for a minute. Just everybody. Let me feel a little bit. I'm the I see a lot of people on YouTube doing lots and lots of shows, giving lots of interviews. And I see a lot of ideas and I don't see anybody actually doing the Greek. Huh. I see a lot of people professing to, but I don't see a lot of people doing it. So the next time somebody says, where's his evidence? It's right here. Bring it up to It's right here. People look here. It is. Okay. Let's read this. Let's just read it in the Greek. He says, I'm going to do a sign. He says, I know that you're a pharmacos. And a student of Jesus, he says, "You're not gonna, you're not gonna bamboozle me. You're not gonna bamboozle me, because what's what's Philip been doing? He's been bamboozling people. This guy is nuts. This guy is nuts. He makes people blind, and then heals them. Leave it up. He makes people blind, and and then heals them, so that they will follow him and give him their children." you're kidding oh by the end of this you guys are going to be so fed up you're going to be so fed up with this circus oh god makes your stomach turn what these christians are doing and all under the direct leadership and guidance of jesus himself now philip fortunately is able to conjure jesus he's able to say shazam and then all of a sudden now there he is. It's really cool. You should see it. And lots of drugs. Any, anyhow, anywho, see how they're calling him a drug, a drug guy? Watch what he does. He says, you're not going to, this other guy tells Philip, he says, you're not going to bamboozle me. You're not going to mess with my mind. And so what does it say? the apostle, but the apostle says to him, Zabarthan Sabathabat Brahmanuch. Tahu Elfe. That's his summoning. He's just summoned Jesus. Tahu Elfe. Come quickly. And then he gave him some of the words that we see in the Greek magical papyri. Fantastic. Isn't that nice? And look, they say these things forwards and backwards. They take um, syllables and reverse them. Oh, it's good stuff. And if you're able to follow it, you can tell which gods are being imprecated. So here Philip is. He says his magic words. Up, come, up comes Jesus. And let's go back to the text. Up comes Jesus. Yeah. And um, next. Oh, oh, oh. And so, and so Philip is like, Philip is like, okay, here we go. And he does this thing. And, you know, he's like got a shout that's magic if you want to think of it that way. And he shouts this thing out, this magic shout, and the ground underneath this guy who says, you're not going to bamboozle me, it opens up and then swallows him up to his knees, up to his knees. And he says, now do you want to be a Christian? And the guy's like, no. <laughs> so the ground opens up again, only this time up to his neck. And he says, now do you want to be a Christian? Long story short. You know, sometimes it's hard to convince somebody to be a Christian. Sometimes you got to, you know, bury them up to their neck, torture them a little bit, right? That's what the document is clearly supporting. This is fantastic. I love it. Remember, we're with the Lace Days, right? We're with an organization that traffics in children, right? What do you think we're doing where we're doing? You want to chart the the missionary travels and journeys of Philip. Just look at all the stops he's got to make to get kids. Yeah. They continued the tradition. Why? They were born into it. 
right? They were born again. You want to see the drugs that they're making them born again with? Let's see. Next one. Give me the next. Oh, look at this. Oh, here it is. Are you ready, people? Look at this. He deemed them worthy. There were some people that are following Peter, right? I mean, uh, Philip. And he deems them worthy of, of the sphragis. What is a sphragis? Look at that last word, sphragidos. Nice. Nice. What is that? What is that? Oh, well, let's just click to the next one. Let's see. Boom. Next one. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, here's the definition. Um, three and five is what I want you to look at for what this thing is that he's got a tablet of limnian medicinal earth. Okay, fine. We got some medicine in there. Jump down to number five, a pastille. Does anybody know what a pastille is? Does anybody know? It's a little bitty pill. Take that down, Chewy. It's a little bitty pill that you can put in a cup and it will dissolve and you can drink it. And whatever benefits of the pill were, you're going to get. But you can also take that little pill, and they make them this way, and you can burn it. You can put that little cup in a brazier, and you can burn that thing and fumigate yourself. Either way, you can inhale it, or you can swallow it. Huh, okay, okay. So he's giving him a pastille in the Christing. Okay, okay, hold. Just hold it. Remember, he's a pharmacos. He's a pharmacos. So the technical that vocabulary that they're using is pertinent. It's overly pertinent. Okay, so let's go back to the one under that one. I want people to see the Latin as well because we have this thing. Go ahead, under the, under the last one we did. Next one. There we go. It comes from the Latin word pastilus, right? Look, a little loaf, a little loaf in medicine. It's a little round ball or cake or lozenge. And then you see the Greek word below that, trohiscus. Yes. And all of a sudden, take it down. I'm going to give you something. You're welcome. You can thank me. You can thank me for this. In the book of the Apocalypse, when we are talking about beasts and seals, we are using medical terminology. It is cult medical terminology that Laestase, the Laestase, uses. And next week, when we go walk in the shoes of an ancient Laestase, you're going to be surprised. You're going to be surprised about the power and effect of the drugs within the child um, slave trade. Yeah, you're going to love it. We got, speaking of child, children, slaves. Um, from antiquity, from the ancient world, we we need some. We need to bring them back in. I've got more Bible with more of the, you know, with more of the child slaves. Um, let's see, you know, next text, next text. Boom! Give me the next one. Yeah, right. Oh, look, I mentioned them, and here they come. It just can't get any better, right? So he deemed these people worthy of this pill right, that they receive in the Christing. And what happens when they used it? Look, I'm, the very next line, a great joy breaks out in the house, right, in their dwelling. And what happens? Poloi, douloi, lots of slaves and lots of paidiskai. Oh, no. Oh, no. And this isn't just saying... This isn't just saying male slaves and female slaves. This is saying slaves, both male and female, and you know what the Pideskia is, right? Prostitute. Prostitute. Okay. That's what the Greek says. I'm just bringing you the Greek. And for those of you out there who would try and try again to sit under the bridge and write your screed and try to get me thrown off of YouTube. For those of you who are into those kind of tactics behind the veil.
thanks, Joey. Thanks. We got a little stat. We got a little cat to come through a little asteroid belt or something. What was that? Was that Alderaan? I think it was Alderaan. Um, fantastic. Let's keep going. Bring up that text. Here we go. Are you guys ready for this? Boom. Next one. Yep, that's good. Yeah, yeah. And what happens? So a lot of these slaves and many of these prostitutes and children, pides, just just children, strays, right? This is a big problem in antiquity. Stray children is a big thing. And the Romans are like, stop doing that to those stray children. And the early Christians are like, uh-uh, got to catch us. So it was a game they played. A lot of arresting, a lot of imprisonment, and stuff like that. Because the Christian church is that slave trading operation from the beginning. So, okay, let's let's take a look. Take a look at what who else ends up there? The kids? Oh, and this is terrible. The Napia. The Napia. Oh no. The Napia show up. That's like saying somebody who's uh, you know, doesn't have all their faculties can't make any sort of decisions on their own very malleable these are the people that that um uh, celsus was it celsus yeah was complained about i think it was complained about um when he said these are the kind of people that the christians target right um so these are unfortunates right a lot of these kids are abandoned and they end up again look they're flocking to philip and his magic it's you know uh yeah yeah and notice that it explicitly states that they are children that they are children right okay let's see what happens philip show us your drugs we still got to see him transform a boy into a girl he does that he does that saint philip we love you we love you, Philip. Okay, let's go to the next text. Let's go. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, okay. And so what did they do? They got mad. At this point, okay, I'm just, I'm showing you what's happening to Philip. Okay, and it's kind of, yeah, I'm enjoying the parts I enjoy. So give me a break. The crowd has had enough. The crowd has had enough of Philip and his drugs. And they take him captive and they lead him to the place. I'm translating to the place of where they're going to judge him in, in order that they may uh, uh, whip him, right? Lacerate him, right? Get him with the mastiques with that whip. And the crowd, the crowd shouts out, bind his hands and feet so we can beat him. They end up taking him and affixing him to the wall. <laughs> it's very no no if you delight in such things if you delight did i lose did i lose the thing there here if you delight if you delight in saint philip hung upside down and chained being beaten with a whip and at one point they they consider bleeding him <laughs> Why are they going to bleed, Philip? Because these, this, these are the people who follow. They, they call them the serpents. And they follow. It's a culture. It's an ethnicity. And they follow the dragon queen. And they want Philip's blood to give to her to consume. They want to give her um, her his blood to drink to drink do you know why philip's blood is so important if you if you read that you'll it'll it'll pass you over and you won't understand why it's important that guy's blood is so full of drugs it's so full of drugs he can make the seeing blind and the blind see with just a fumigation oh my god God. Okay, let's watch this. Oh, and by the way, tonight I also have, I know it's getting late. Neil, it's going to, another 15 minutes. Let's, because uh, I've got something good for you tonight the Dragon Communion. The Dragon Communion. I want you guys to see this. You guys didn't know about the Christian Dragon Communion, did you? You guys are all sitting there and you're being bombarded with all of this YouTube, all of these different shows that you can watch. Nobody's going to give you this. 
I'm giving you the Greek text, showing it to you. I'm just going to speak it out. And we're going to see something nobody else has seen. The dragon communion. When you raise the dragon, lift up that dragon. Moses, not a word. Not a word. Next source, please, Chewie. Let's go to the next one. Fantastic. We're almost there. Look at this. Um, yeah, don't. Don't. This is a prohibition here people this is a prohibition yeah don't blind us with your magic that's somebody i just wanted you to see they know his magia whatever that pharmacos is doing it's causing people problems yeah this is a public service that they're doing with philip hanging him upside down it's a public service yeah i'm telling you those, the, everybody knows he's a follower of Jesus, right? And so what, is that, what does that imply? Yeah, there's a connection between the name of Jesus and the activities of the lay days. And those of you who say, it means wobble. No, it doesn't. Okay, let's go. This is, I love it, man. If you're going to do it, let's go all the way, guys. Let's show them the next text. This is, uh, this is fantastic. Look, so um, these men, you know, they serve this echidna, this viper goddess, right? And she's the mother of the serpents. She's the mother of the serpents. Next one, please. Mother of the serpents. And what happens now? He says, Mir hey, Miriam, Miriam. Who is Mariamne? Mariamne. Who is that? It's Philip's twin sister that he transforms into a boy. Philip has a twin sister? Yes. And he tells her here, he says, what? What? He says, change. Change your feminine form. Change your feminine form and go about with Philip. Oh, my God change your form that's quite a thing he's talking about doing there this guy is nuts or these th these drugs are great one of the two let's go keep going right are you surprised that the serpent can change the form from masculine to feminine are you surprised oh my goodness the dragon queen knows baby that's why we're here that's why we're here you think they worship lady babylon for a reason right Mm, I'm going to show you the actual reason at the end. It's the last quote today. You're going to, second to last. You're going to love it. Okay, keep going. Thanks for hanging in there, Gnostic. Give me a little bit of time. I know you'd love it. Look at this first line. Hey, De Theoclea. Here's another one. Theoclea also does what? She changes the arrangement, the cosmos, the cosmos. She changes that of her feminine nature into that i'm translating of a man she metamorphosizes can you believe that it's another one philip meets these people and by the way they're young the one i'm about to show you i'm going to show you one more um <laughs> right they're children right the one that he's about to change is is the daughter of somebody who's there and she's doing something and, and, and let's let's go to it uh, okay so remember the venom the venom's there keep going oh god it, it's a lovely path i think they're all gonna find it. it look okay ready there's hidden stuff in here people are you ready you're gonna love this yeah yeah so um anyway the apostle of christ we went up to the region of Parthia, and there he saw in a city um, the apostle Peter, the apostle of Jesus, and he's with some companions, and he's also with some students and some women. What kind of women? The kind of women who put on the genuineness of the man. Oh, goodness. The kind of women who put on the pistis. It's the word that you guys have heard over and over is faith. 
a transformation. A transformation. Love it. Love it. And Neil will tell you about it. He's been reading plenty. Plenty he's talking about transformations of male to female and female to male. And how do you do this? And what is the nature of the drugs that are involved in doing this? It so, sounds very modern, doesn't it? Sounds very modern. Yes. Fantastic. It is indeed. Give me the next source. People are going to. I've got to give you the climax. Are we coming to the climax? Yeah, I think we're coming. I think we're coming up here. Okay. Um, yeah. When you're thinking about Jesus, the vampire Jesus that gets summoned by Philip because he has that power. When you think about him, this is who he is. He says, I am the son, S-U-N. I am the son the God of righteousness. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And you're my rays. <laughs> oh, you almost had me, Jesus. You know, it got creepy in the end. Why didn't you just leave it? I'm the son. And you're my rays. Okay. Wait a minute. This is one magus to another. Okay. Let those with ears to hear, hear. Go to the next one, Chewy, please. We're almost there. Only a couple of more. Look at this. Um, so what happens? This uh, There's a young girl, and she has an eye. Long story short, she's got an eye infection of some sort, and it's very painful. And her daddy, who's some bigwig, drives an ancient Tesla probably, right? Um, he He's worried. He's worried because his daughter is coming to him, and he's taking her to the doctor. He's got ones that worked for the local potentate, you know what I mean? And nothing's helping her. And she says, she says tonight, she says, I heard this guy, right? She said, he's got drugs. Um, th the end of this is actually, is Echus uh, Pharmaca. See the drugs there? He, um, this is him talking about the drugs that have been used already to try to heal her of her eye problem. And he asks, he says there, he says, what else is there that I can do, right? What else can I possibly do for you? We're taking all the other doctors. What, what, what else can I do? And then bring the next text. And then she says in response, isn't this nice? It's a little episode of reality from the ancient world. You know, his daughter has an eye infection. It's not going away. And none of these idiot doctors can figure it out. So what does she say to him? She says, I know, dad. She says, I know that you have always labored on my behalf. She says, now the thing that I deem right, do it for me, please. Yeah, what I think, do it right. She said, tonight I have heard, on this very night, I heard the voice of a doctor. And he's a stranger. He's not from here. He talks different. Talk, talk, talk different. And he comes here. And what does he say? Um, he's preaching about drugs. He's announcing some great new drugs that he's got there. You got He's sleeping over in your storage unit over there because they rented out the storage unit to the travelers. And she said, I heard him talk and he knows these new drugs. He'll be able to heal me. I'll bet you. And next slide, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Oh my God. She says, um, you know, of course he does, right? <laughs> right? But he's um, she says, Oh my goodness, she says, I'm begging you. She goes right to him, right? She says, I'm begging you, Philip. You're the servant of God, right? Heal this pain that I got going on in my eyes. If you do, I will be your servant to Leah. I will be your servant to Leah. And right away, you ask yourself, well, what is a servant to Leia? Is that something that, is that a, some kind of slave that is perfect, that has been through the right, that has been finished, accomplished, done? Hmm, that's odd. Let's see if Talia has anything else. Let's, is there, I've got a, did, did I manage to bring this one? Go to the next slide. Go to the next slide. Um, yeah, look. Look what I dug up, people. You're going to love this. This is an antidote from Scribonius, a Roman. Yeah, where can you get this? You think your people are going to pull this up? They're not going to pull this up for you. 
you, any Bible scholar you've got who's saying, oh, in these days it's this. They don't know these texts. They don't do this work. They don't have the right to say things that are so patently wrong. Yes, look at this. So this is the antidote of Martian, the um, physician, right? Um, yeah, and this thing is, look, this thing is called Telea by the Greeks. See on the second line, Telea? There it is. And why is it called Telea? She said she's going to be a Telea servant. What is Telea? Telea, Telea, Telea. Bring it out to me. It is an antidote. Okay. For those of you who've been watching this whole time and adding things up, it is an antidote, a servant antidote. I told you they're using the human body to produce drugs in rites that involve sex. Yeah. Okay. She is entering into the position that Jesus took from all of his apostles. They are coming under the umbrella of the Laestes, who is going to run the business of their prostitution. She is entering that institution with Philip. Fantastic. Where is she going to produce the antidote? How is she going to produce the antidote? Give me that next text. This is okay, people. Hold on. Hold on to your seat. Nope, below that. Hold on to your seat. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this is just, I'm sorry. It's the next one, Chewy. It's the next one. That just talks more about him as a pharmacos. And a, yeah, yeah. No, some people say he was a magician, blah, blah, blah. We know that already. Yep, yep, yep. Let's keep going. Oh, and where at this point in the game, they're at a house of a guy who had was blind and um, they made him see again. And I'm just going to translate for you um, the last line. Um, he came to see again through the ptusmatos of the woman who served them, of the woman who was assigned, Akolutho, the woman who was assigned, who took in her um, slavery, who became the doulos, right? That slave is the one who is giving this thing. And it's the Ptusma. Can we get that text one more time? I just want people so they don't, you know, I've been saying they use human body fluids in right in ritu right and it because it's all over the medicine people you can't get away from them in medicine so because it's not weird or unusual in the rights look at this look at what they're doing here look at the tuzmatos what does that mean bring me up the next boom whoops that was a wrong one take it down just, what does that mean it, it can be translated from the verb ptuo, which be, means exactly what it sounds. A little ejaculation of fluid from the body in some sort or another. It doesn't have to be just from the mouth. It can be any ejection of fluids, any production of fluids, ptuo, a little ptuo, a little spit out there. Yes, yes coming from she who has entered in to the slavery. She who is the antidote. When, when you ask yourself why Jesus is with a naked boy in a public park uh, at 4 a.m. when he gets arrested yelling, I'm not a child trafficker, you have to realize that that child was a lot more than just an innocent victim. That child was a transformed factory for drug rights. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Now, Jesus and the naked boys, um, we're going to continue this theme with Neil now, um, who is going to talk uh, to you about the gospel of, of Philip. Oh, and the dragon thing. We'll have to wait on the, the great 
um, summoning of the dragon and the rights. We'll get to that. But now okay. I want to bring in Neil. I just I want got a couple of texts that I'm going to throw in. I'll give it right back to you. And you can finish off with that dragon. Um, and a couple of them are related. This is from the Gospel of Peter. Coptic text attributed to Peter. Same guy, different language. This one, this first one's called God is a man eater. And so this is the gospel of Peter is not really a gospel in like, like you're, like you're used to. It's a, it's wisdom literature. So it has little paragraphs with different titles and it's just all over the place, back and forth. There is no, like, it doesn't start in the beginning. In the beginning, Mary gave birth. Nope. It just goes all over the place. Wisdom literature, sort of like a proverb. Well, yeah. Proverbs. Anyways, God is a man eater. So people are sacrificed to him. Whoa, this is the Christian shit right here. This is the real Christian shit. Listen to this. Before humans were sacrificed, it was animals. Because those they were eaten by were not gods. Wait a minute. Are you telling me that your God just wants to be sacrificed humans and not animals? What? This is like... Um, 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 before I go to the next one, thoughts on this one real quick? What do you think about this? Yeah, the consumer. You know what? It, I've seen a band of women eat, eat a person, take them apart and eat them. So, yeah, no, this is, uh, I would smell the in line with that Bacchic tradition, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. No, it's part, it's why the Greeks are always walking around embarrassed about their past saying, well, we don't sacrifice human beings anymore. At anymore, least. right. Yeah, and then and the Jews said the same thing about um, sacrificing their like. The, if you look at the Old Testament text, it says like, "Oh, they outlawed human sacrifice because of Abraham." Like they basically let you know, like before Abraham, this was all this was all over the place, which is you know whatever. And there's there's text from like Porphyry about uh, people in Canaan sacrificing humans to Saturn, and there's a lot of text like that actually. Anyways. I thought that was interesting because oh, and there's a, there's another Christian group that butt heads with this group. The Val, I think it's the uh, the Seth Sethians. They didn't get along well because the Canaanites were pure vegetarians, so they thought that Yahweh. This is these Canaanites were badasses. They were completely, completely against the grain. They thought Yahweh, this God that wants human sacrifice, evil. And they said, Jesus is the son of a different God, um, Sophia, wisdom. And they said that Yahweh is evil because of this. And so they have, diff they have different opinions on Cain was the good guy. Abel was the bad guy, such stuff like that. Anyways, I'm going to keep going. Next one. Mystery is called. This one says, I'm going to read it from my text. So I can't see the bottom. This is, this is called mystery. Same gospel of Philip. Coptic text translated into English. It is good to speak of mystery, especially because the father of all joined with the virgin who came down. And on that day, a fire shone over him. He came to the bridal chamber. So, so on that very day, his body came into being. And on the day he left the chamber with the splendor. You know what that word is. And what passed between the bride and the bridegroom. Through this force, Jesus did everything. It is good for his, it is good for each of his students to go into the chamber and rest. Get in there, little boys. Get in the bed. Get in the bridal bed with Jesus. You know what time it is. It's time for the Christ thing. Any thoughts on that one? I think it's mainstream. Um uh worship with the great mother with the intimacy with the boy entering the bed with you i don't think the christians can get away from their heritage and um yeah i would i would say you know again we're right in the middle of the mystery religion so yeah bravo. and you might and you might be asking hey wait a minute there's no christ thing going on here what do you get what are you just adding stuff well, let's go to the next let's go to the next one the superior superiority of chrism to baptism. The chrism is superior to baptism. For the word chrism, we have been called Christians. See, it's not just about Jesus being a Christian. It's about you being Christed. Get it? And surely not from the word baptism. They're not Baptist. That's a whole other bucket cult all the way in Greece. And maybe John was part of that movement. 
that's we know about the origins of the Baptists. It's not Judaism. The Baptists were Bacchants living in Corinth, uh, Ephesus, and a couple other locations, and they were devotees of the goddess Kotis, K-O-T-Y-S. Look it up for yourself. Don't listen to me. Look it up for yourself. They were called Baptists. These are Christians. And because of the chrism, Christ has his name. The Father anointed the Son. The Son anointed the messengers. See, you get you get Christed too. And the messengers anointed us. Who has been anointed possesses everything. Resurrection, light, cross, Holy Spirit. That's that Daisy Demona. Daisy Demonia. The Father gave him this in the bridal chamber. There you go. The Christ in the bridal chamber. Just like I just mentioned in the last passage, he merely accepted the gift. You are the beloved. You are the disciple of the of the adept when you're an initiate in the mysteries. You do as they say. You are the young boy being initiated, probably around 12 years old, usually. Um, Mithraics did this. Christians did this. This was the way it was. You are the young boy gets anointed and initiated by an elder man. You become his beloved. You get Christed, and then you pass it on to the next. Every time, as soon as you become of age and you're old enough to find your own boy to Christ, that's when it happens. You initiate the next. That's how it started off. That's what the sources tell us. The father gave him in his bridal chamber. He merely accepted the gift. See how those these these two passages are linked together. The one was about the bridal chamber. And this one's about Christing. So, and he gets in his bed with the splendor. What does that mean? <laughs> Naked. <laughs> That's what that means. Yeah. So I got one more text that I want to show. And this one, I, I met, you mentioned ejaculation. This is not from the gospel of Philip, but it's also part of the same group of texts that came from the same area, Nag Hammadi and Coptic. And it says, darkness ejaculates mind into the womb. Let's read the first paragraph. And when the darkness saw the womb, he may, he became unchast. And when he had aroused the water, he rubbed the womb. His mind dissolved down to the depths of nature. It mingled with the power of the bitterness of darkness. And the womb's eye ruptured at the wickedness in order that she might not again bring forth the mind, the noose. For it was seed of nature from the dark root. Oh, one more sentence. And when nature had taken to herself the mind by means of the dark power, every likeness took shape in her. In her. And when the darkness had acquired the likeness of the mind and resembled the spirit. So what, I want to get your thoughts on this text. What do you think about this? I think it's gorgeous. I think it's gorgeous and I think it's a perfect it's a perfect lead up to that which they pull out of that darkness. When they're talking about that seed, um why don't we talk about the seed of the dragon coming from the darkness, right? People don't really and people are like, "What? What are you guys talking about? This is Christianity, people. This is the symbols that they're using." And Neil assuming your translator from that Coptic hit the symbols right? I mean, you know, just from, an, you know, somebody who doesn't do Coptic, right. those symbols that you're hitting are straight up mystery. They're so perfectly meshed with the text that I'm about to show. Um, let, Neil, if you can stick around. I yeah, know you're yeah, busy. let's do it. I'm excited for this because okay. we have let two me... texts that are, that are attributed to Philip. Yeah. So they're, they're, we're thinking, is this a, you know, they have the Johannine collection. They have the Pauline collection. Well, we're, we're today we're looking at the Philippine collection. <laughs> So let's yeah. let's continue. I like that. I like that. Okay. Um, I'm about to sh what I'm about to show you is an actual right. I'm not going to comment on it. For those of you who have ears to hear, I want you to pay attention. I want you to be focused. Um, but I'm not going to comment on it. I'm just going to translate it because I think you just need this source. I don't want any of my ideas going into it. Um, Chewy, hit us with the first one, blow it up so that I can just begin. All right, here we go. I'm putting on my glasses. And it came about when the apostles had gathered together with one another. Of their company was Philip and Bartholomew and Mariamne and the leopard and the goat, 
both of which talk. They went around for five days. And after the midnight prayers, they got up early and got on the road. When behold, all of a sudden, a great dark wind blew upon them. And from the darkness came upon the servants of God, the dragon, the greatest dragon who comes from the dark. His back is black. His belly burns like the coals of bronze in the in the Oh, shit, what is that? Spinterismos, in the sparks, in the sparks of the fire. The, his body is stretched out over a hundred cubits. And a multitude of serpents and a multitude of the offspring of those serpents serve the dragon. The entire place that we call the void quakes next page when uh, when philip when philip saw all of this he says to bartholomew and to miriamne right hey guys um we have the need right now of the savior let us call to mind the great oracle of Christ who sent us out and said, and ready people, here's a quote of Jesus you've never heard. Don't be afraid. Fear neither persecution nor the serpents of that place nor the dark dragon. So Philip says, let's stand then. Let's stand then as pillars rooted before the face of God. And you know what we'll do? We, all of the power of the, of the enemy, will be stifled. And their platform, their argument, their, their arrogance will fall. Let us pray and let us purify the air in the cup. There, that darkness will be established and a cloud will rise. Mm. Okay, wait a minute. What? Okay, okay. W let's finish this. Those of you who are watching the cult happen, let's finish it. He's about to get really culty. Forget about the talking leopard right now. Forget about why Philip is walking around with a leopard and a goat, right? Forget about the Bacchic influence. Forget about all the Bacchic terminology that they're using. Forget about the shouts and the drugs. Let's see what happens to the dragon. This is going to be weird, right? Go, go ahead. Next. Yeah. And so what happens? Taking the cup. And this is the cup of communion, people. Taking the cup for each. They prayed in this way. Are you ready? They're holding that thing up, right? You're looking at the cup of communion. This is the cup of Christ. And what do they say to the cup of Christ? You are the one who creates the all fire dew. You are the darkness of the bridle. You are the one who bridles the mouth of the dragon. You are the one who controls the dragon's anger. You're the one who turns away all of the ill that my enemy would do against me. You are the one who plunges the man into your own fire. You're the one who guards the burrow. You're the one who makes strong the coming out of the dragon. You're the one who guards his appearance. Come with us into this wilderness, for we run through this world cycle by means of your will and command. Oh, my goodness. Finally, finally, what last one. 
So Philip turns, right? He, he goes through all these machinations. He's doing this right. He's been saying his magic phrases. He's been using his drugs. And now he turns and he says to Bart and to Miriam, he says, now stand up. Wait, what? Yeah, they were laying down the whole time. He says, get up now and raise up your hands with that sacred cup that we have fortified and now purify the air use the sign of the cross behold the glory and the power of god behold the glory and the power of god oh my goodness and immediately what happened people now we've been waiting for this moment take it down for just one minute We've been waiting for this moment the whole time. I told you guys they were using this right and what they would be doing with it. The only thing you're doing in the mystery is you're bringing the lightning. If you are the son of God, you are bathed in the lightning. You are that power. You are born anew. This is the rebirth that Christianity promises. And in it, we have to find lightning. Go ahead, Chewy. Hit us with that source. Hit us with that source. Ready? This is the last paragraph. And immediately there came about something that was like fire lightning. Lightning of fire. Fire producing lightning that it consumes. And oh, let me continue translating. And what happens? It blinded, it blinded the dragon. And what else? The beasts that were in the dragon. Wait a minute. Are we talking about the cup? Are we talking about the antidote, the telea? Are we talking about the dragon as the formula? The dragon is that which contains the theria, the beasts. In, in the book of the Apocalypse, they are using this exact same terminology, right? And their trohiskoi are taking them there. Their drugs are taking them there. Let's go. Let me finish it off, and that's it. I'm sorry to take so long tonight. And the apostles, what did the apostles do? They averted their eyes. They averted their eyes, and so that they wouldn't be able to see into that amazing place that was revealed in lightning. That amazing place is the place that produces that sputum. It is the place that produces that juice of the body that they call the water of life. And it is there that one becomes blind those serpents get that drug in their eyes. We know that Porphyry talks about the use of venoms to create cause blindness. And he talks about them as these potent drugs. So what are we going to do? What are we going to do here with, with our right that we're watching? If you want to follow the communion, and enter the lightning, you must become blind. A child of the serpent, a child of echidna. Now do you know why Jesus was sitting on the cross screaming for Sabachthon? Because that one guy in the audience that was watching him as he was hanging there dying, that one guy in the audience said, oh, see, as soon as he said Sabachthon, that one guy said, I told you. I told you the guy was a Satanist. He casts out demons in the powers of the underworld. I told you he was. This is exactly what the craft of the lace days is meant to do. You are meant to shadow within that Saturnian kingdom to perpetuate this abuse. It's amazing. It's amazing. Neil, I'm going to let you fill in any you know questions anxieties what well, um what do you think i think i might have found a kid not right now can we get, can we pull up the screen that i got ready for this this is taylor swift at her concert she never 
<laughs> Yo, it hits right when she right when she screams, the lightning's coming. And there's an there's like four other videos like this with Taylor Swift. Like, yo, is she the Christ? Is she the chosen one? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. That is a base. That is a base appeal, Neil, to Tay Tay. Right? Okay. She got your message there. Okay. She got she's got your message. Tay Tay. Dragon, though. That dragon yeah. really puts context in what's going on in Revelation now. All of a yeah. sudden, this text gives us the context of what's happening in Revelation with the dragon. Yeah. Yeah, the more cult terminology that you pick up and the more you see how the cults are operating, the more you can track it that way. And it all of a sudden, those things that you think are signs and wonders that preachers preach about all the time, and they're always coming up with the latest theory about who is the Antichrist. None of that, none of that stuff matters. It doesn't matter at all. Once you see the context of what's going on, it locks in and it makes sense. The authors of um, what we call the apocalypse, they didn't, they, they didn't assemble something that was meant to drive us all nuts that we wouldn't understand, right? They're not going to be able to talk outside of their natural, sibylline, oracular um, expressions, and that's what yeah. they're using. It's, it's the, the apocalypse is all sibylline. It's, it's early, earlier than John, reprocessed by John. In fact, um, Celsus, yeah. when Celsus is describing the Christians, he says that he's, he branches them out. He says the people that call themselves Christians are among the first thing he says is Sibyllists. Then he says Simonians. Then he names off uh, Marcionites, a couple other groups. First thing he says, though, Sibyllist. So I'm like, they're, they're, the Sibyllists are tied to the Christians early on, early on. And everyone knew it. Celsus is a prime example of giving you telling you that right away when he says the people that we call christians are these groups and the first name he gives sibilist so he talks a lot about that too nice that's good backup what do you think about give me your opinion neil about the transformation he does this to three different women um he transforms them into men do what do you think is the significance of that there's this idea of coming reborn and transformation, metamorphosis. Ovid, don't look, look, let's Ovid, Apuleius, Bacchus, all these texts that are called metamorphosis. The story is you start off in this place, you go through your passion, and then you come out metamorphosized. That's the whole, that's, that's the tragedy of life. You know how Nietzsche talks about the Apollonian and Dionysian to combined is a tragedy you can't have one without the other that's like a yin and the yang dionysus the dark apollo the light they're like a yin yang they, they, they have to the opposites of each other dionysus is chthonic underworld dark vegetation moisture the underworld that pushes the moisture up apollo he's underworldly and apollo is heavenly he's in the sky he's a light bringer he is the he is the light that goes down, and those two together is the metamorphosis. It's the tragedy. So you have to go through that in your life. Everybody's supposed to go through that in a lifetime. That's a fulfilled life. That's a complete life. And it's a it's amazing that the Orphics use the very same conceptions with the arrows of Eros. They're either gold or they're black, and people are always at or cyanic. They're described as cyanic dark black something like that and um people always ask what's the difference between those um, arrows and aphrodite because aphrodite is sometimes described as golden and sometimes as dark right and she lo loses those when she enters that dark morning she becomes that queen of the underworld so you see the very same thing that's going on between apollo and dionysus it's some kind of physics that they're explaining about how the cosmos works. Yeah, it's gorgeous, Neil. I'm, I mean, it makes you kind of want to join one of these ancient cults. You know yeah. what I mean? Just to, just to get access to, if nothing else, all the good scrolls. You know what I mean? Yeah, I understand it. I don't have anything like that. I get it. I understand these things. Like when I look at the ancient world and I see this culture, I'm like, wow, makes sense. That seems like like the Eleusinian mysteries, okay? Demeter and Bacchus, Vine and and uh vine and uh grain right bread and wine those two 
moisture, dryness, they t come together in the cup. You mentioned that cup, that Eucharist. You take the cup, you die. You go through a, uh, a psychedelic trip, you die. And then you have an orgy all night. You go through this wild, ecstatic experience to become a new person, have this experience that you'll never forget. By dawn, they would do it all night. This is what they describe in the mysteries when you get initiated. All night long, you are tripping on this kaikion. You're having these orgies. You're going through it. Then they bring out the phallus in this box, this holy box. And the hero fonts, you, they're holding it. And you, the initiate, are the only person who's allowed to touch it. You open the box, you bring out the phallus, you touch it, and then you put it back. And then you say the magic words, I have get, taken from the box, I have put back in the box. Then, as dawn starts to rise up, as the, as the light bringer, as Lucifer starts to show up, you are supposed to go to a baptist. You go to the next room, the telesterion. You take a bath, a sacred bath. You get washed. After you're washed, you come out, it's dawn, it's daylight. You are reborn. The people who went through this experience, we have testimonies. All of them, all the testimonies are all saying, I have no longer fear death. I am saved. I'm sell I have salvation. They all experienced this thing. So whatever was going on in these mysteries was changing people's lives to the point where, for example, and this is my next video that I'm about to release in the next day or two about Dionysus. There was a guy from, from uh, India. His name is Zarmaris. He traveled all the way from India to go meet up with Augustus as a um, messenger from King Porus, the Indian king. He wanted to send delegates to offer a, a hand and peace. Like, we're going to have peace. The, the Romans and the Indians, well, are gonna, you know, we, there's no war between us, blah, 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 blah. So he sends over this delegate, Zaramaris. And Zaramaris knew about the Eleusinian mysteries all the way in India. Dionysus was so famous He's worshipped everywhere. Everyone knows who Dionysus is. He gets to Athens. He gets up with Augustus. He go, they go to El Eleusinian Mysteries. They open it up, even though it's out of season, because it's Augustus. Augustus can do stuff. He's the August one. He's the Augustus. So they open it up. They let this guy get initiated. What does he do? Right? This is going to sound crazy, but I kind of, in a weird way, I kind of like understand it. This guy got initiated, went through that experience that I just explained. And then after the next morning, jumped into a fire and killed himself. And then he wrote, they wrote on his tombstone that he had nothing else in life that he needed to fulfill his, he wanted to end his time as the Brahmins do. It says like, it is a custom of the Brahmins that when you are fulfilled, you end your life. There's no point in you go on to the next. And he felt after being initiated into the rites of Bacchus and Demeter, there was nothing else to be done. I want to end it. Wow. That's crazy. And that's that's and that's in like 10 that's in like four i think four or five different sources uh cassius dio says it nicholas of damascus a couple other people have this written in this in different ways but it's it's well sourced that this happened so he was with augustus and strangely enough that text tonight that i showed you from in the latin that is a formula that the text says is taken from augustus that he's the one who uses it, right? He's using this really advanced formula. So yeah, it it uh, it it makes you wonder, Neil, when when people are going through it and they're professional, like upstanding, you know, good people and intelligent people that you trust, like Cicero, and they say that you got to go through these rites because you you really aren't aware before you do. <laughs> yeah, you know who got you know the list of people who got I'll give you a short list of people who were initiated into the Eleusinian mysteries. Um Julius Caesar, Cleopatra, Marcus Aurelius, Olympias, Queen the uh the mother of Alexander the Great, Alexander the Great, Augustus. I mean, that's just a short list of like the some of the most famous people in world history. Plato, Socrates, all those people in Athens, they all did this. This was a you had to, or else who were you? You didn't get it initiated. They it all was, did this. It was a way of purging the people. It was a way of somehow keeping that democracy going. And I know it predates it, but it does something for the people. There's yeah. something in that purge that changes your perspective. That kind of, I don't know, is it freeing? You know, is that what it is? Essentially, it just frees your mind because it allows you to experience what's beyond that point of death, what's before that point of birth. You know, it, 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 the stuff is, the fact that 
they have constructed. And when you talk about Eleusis, Eleusis, they didn't just sit down one day and say, oh my God, we're going to figure out this right, right? That's, that's been handed down. That Bronze Age Absolutely. mystery right, you know, had such a profound effect on the world. Yeah. You know, uh, that's what they, Neil, that's what they said. They said it, it lasted past, like, they don't even know how old it is. They know the sources of it in the Mycenaean period. So it's at least Bronze Age, at least. But it lasts all the way to 500 AD. They couldn't get rid of it. Even, the, even like the worst Christian emperors that tried to shut it down couldn't. It took a long time. To, it was the last thing to go out of all the pagan religions. The last thing. Because nobody wanted to lose it. Everybody loved it. And so you know what they did to end it? <laughs> Christians are, you got to hand it to them. They're kind of smart. They're slick. They co-opted it. They created a, 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 a new story about St. Demetrius. Demetrius means Demeter's son. And he was a he was an initiate in El Elusinian mysteries in the fifth century, and they said that Demeter came to him in a dream and told him that they needed to convert Elusinian to a, an Orthodox church, and this is what your decree is. And so they obviously, you know, converted it into a church. It's, that church is still there today. It's an Orthodox church, but they had to go that route to get rid of it. They couldn't just do it out of popular vote or people not wanting it. They had to do it in a, in a slick way. So that's that That guy's name is St. Demetrius to this day. It was kind of like rewriting history, wasn't it? I mean, if you had a St. Orpheus, they have a St. Yeah. Orpheus, yeah. Orpheus, he's holding a, a, a liar in his hand. It's yeah. Orpheus, but no, his name is St. Orpheus. They had to co-op these things. They were too yeah. popular. They were too big for people to just cancel. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Christianity is built on Orphic physics, so there's no there's no way that you couldn't deny the connection. I love that. All right, I'm gonna give you the last comment. Throw in anything you want, and thanks for coming tonight, Neil. Well, I just want to say Sabah Kathon. In fact, hail Satan. Sabah Kathon, Sabah Kathon. <laughs> Do we have the translation or no? All right, fine, hail Satan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was hoping we can get oh there it goes it's on the bottom stop a cathone, stop a cathone. <laughs> I, now you know what we're saying right. nice Chewie thanks all right hail Satan guys Maybe we could walk together again.